Good evening. Thank you for watching this Denver 7 News update. Two and a half million additional Coloradans became eligible for the vaccine today, and everybody else should qualify in a few weeks. We're going to talk about all the people getting their shots in just a second. Our first story, however, concerns the people who are not. Denver 7 Sloan Dickey reports. On Saturday, this church. Just happy that we can uh, use this, uh, you know, a facility to uh, help the community will become a vaccination clinic. We arranged the whole place this evening to organize the welfare. You have your seats here and we're going to have the vaccine stations here. The Solid Rock Baptist Church in Aurora is a crucial venue for reaching the city's Ghanaian population, one of many that have been underrepresented in early vaccination numbers. I think it's a good thing when we can provide access to our community when we can provide a service and when these services are generated from our community. Dr. Kwaku Hazel, a surgeon at UC Health, is organizing the vaccination clinic on Saturday that will bring 500 vaccine doses to people from the surrounding community. Minority populations, especially black immigrants and um, Latinx communities have had uh, historical um, issues with the medical system. Many communities in Aurora show underrepresentation when it comes to receiving the vaccine. Health experts on the ground say numerous factors are the cause. Access, um, individuals not knowing where to go to get the vaccine, um, if they're interested in getting vaccinated. And then secondly, there's a lot of um, hesitancy. In an area with few resources to health systems, this team hopes to be a bridge. These clinics are important to encourage um, higher vaccination uh, rates among the BIPOC community. Another clinic in Aurora on Friday followed the same goal. I think there's going to be about 300 people come through here today to get vaccinated. Denver Indian Health and Family Services set up a clinic for Colorado's indigenous community, spreading vaccine awareness and advocacy. This is a safe place to be. You know, it's really important for certain uh, groups that uh, things are provided in, in a culturally responsive and culturally sensitive way. Events like these are important, experts say, to bring health care to underserved communities. There's reasons why we are in this position. But even after the pandemic ends, those reasons aren't going to magically disappear. There's still much work to be done. Sloan Dickey, Denver 7. Restaurant employees are among the Coloradans who can now sign up for shots, and we imagine a lot of them already have taken advantage. Snooze is hosting clinics on March 23rd and 24th. They'll also be using the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, meaning second shots won't be necessary. Hopefully, you know, we'll have a, a part of the population that'll just be one and done, and, and we can get more people in, hopefully, as quickly as possible. Being around the, the general public for this long and, you know, not having direct access to that, it's, it's a sigh of relief, honestly, for us to be able to get in there. Also now eligible for shots, Coloradans 50 and older, public transportation employees, higher ed instructors, faith leaders, direct care providers, journalists, and people with certain health conditions. The last time Colorado voters approved an increase to the gas tax was 1991. So Democratic lawmakers have tweaked wording in an effort to fund infrastructure projects. A newly proposed transportation bill would raise fees on gas. Now, fees are different than taxes by eight cents per gallon over the next eight years. Diesel would see a larger increase. There would be a 30 cent fee on services like Uber and Lyft and a 25 cent fee on any online deliveries. Electric cars would see their fees nearly double. In all, lawmakers estimate it would cost the consumer $28 a year. Bill co-sponsors say the money would help address our state's massive shortfall for the upkeep and expansion of our state's highways and transportation networks. Now, opponents say it goes against the will of the taxpayers. This is a sustainable solution that's going to raise $4 billion in the next 11-year horizon that is going to make sure we're reducing congestion, getting people out of traffic. What I keep saying is that if we play tricksy with the voters and we say, hey, you know, we're going to impose a fee because we couldn't get you to increase a tax, then I think that we, we really run the risk of violating the trust of the voters of Colorado. The transportation bill will be introduced over the next couple of weeks, and the governor has shown support for it. Well, alone, several Denver businesses would have failed. Together, they're thriving. They're called the Rise Westwood Collective, a handful of micro-businesses combining resources and selling products together. We all have different skill sets and, you know, connecting with, um, you know, someone helping with marketing or someone helping with bookkeeping. You know, we all try to lend a hand. 
The collective space is made up of eight businesses in southwest Denver and owned by Revision. That's a nonprofit that serves that area. Revision says its goal is to preserve the culture of Westwood. Hi, I'm Troy Rank for Denver 7, and it's hard to beat Friday for the Denver Broncos. First, they introduce Shelby Harris on his new three-year contract. Shelby becoming emotional, so thankful for the Broncos believing in him after he'd been cut six times earlier in his career. But the other good news, Justin Simmons agrees in principle on a four-year, $61 million deal with $35 million guaranteed. It makes him the highest paid safety in the NFL, and teammates rejoiced, along with Simmons, obviously. Simmons has been all pro, Pro Bowl, Walter Payton Man of the Year twice, and the good guy with the media. This is the guy other teammates were watching to see. Would George Payton follow through with the draft and development and reward in-house guys? The answer is yes, both with not only Justin Simmons, but Shelby Harris. He's considered homegrown in so many ways because he's found his home in Denver. He didn't want to leave, and he joked that George Payton became his best friend this week. And he said this should be a good sign for players like Bradley Chubb and Cortland Sutton, whose contracts will be coming up in the future. So the Broncos securing key defenders, Shelby Harris, Justin Simmons, and they are certainly interested in cornerback Kyle Fuller. And they also restructured and did some cap math with Brandon McManus and Mike Purcell's contracts. That allows them more space to go after someone like Kyle Fuller. So a very productive Friday for the Broncos and an emotional one for Shelby Harris, who's come a long way from Illinois State to a stalwart on the Denver Broncos. For Denver 7, I'm Troy Rink. Nice warm weather on the way for our Saturday afternoon highs in the low to mid 60s for the day. Warm, dry conditions. Then a cold front moves into Colorado Saturday night and we'll see snow first in the high country and then rain and snow here for the front range into the evening on Sunday. Our high though dropping to 50 degrees. We'll be in the mid to upper 40s for the beginning of next week and we'll have chances for rain and snow showers sticking around through Wednesday. And that just means we'll have a lot of instability in the atmosphere. So we're going to experience that chance for light rain and snow showers off and on for a few days. Then we dry it out and warm it up a little more back into the low to mid 50s for Thursday and Friday. Now if you are skiing or boarding and you want a sunny ski day, go on Saturday. Temperatures will be in the 40s and we won't see snow develop until very late night, but it will be a snow day on Sunday. Highs in the 30s with scattered snow showers. Now on Sunday we'll have a chance for rain and snow here for the Denver area. So if you're out walking the dog, we'll have a temperature of 40 degrees in the morning at 9 a.m. and then a chance for some rain later into the afternoon. And as for the bus stop forecast on Monday, temperatures in the 40s for the day and we'll have that off and on rain and snow chance as we go through our day on the way to school and the way back home. So you might want to bundle up a little bit. Temperatures staying in the 40s here through Wednesday with that chance for rain and snow. Thank you for being with us tonight. We will have more local news at 8 o'clock. But first, explore the people, places, and activities that connect us all to our state. A special presentation of Discover Colorado is next.